just like a woman. An eye catcher, a traffic stopper. About 20 times a day, she brings the activity of a city to a halt. But she's a lady who knows what she's doing. She's a pontoon bridge on the island of Curacao in the Dutch West Indies. Her name is Queen Emma, named after the Dutch queen who reigned during the 1800s. Spanning the channel of Santa Ana Bay, Emma controls the shipping lanes into the fourth largest harbor in the world. She also cuts the capital city of Willemstead in half and makes the landlubbers yield to the traffic of the sea. Of the six small Caribbean islands which make up the Netherlands Antilles, Curaçao is the largest. Shipping and oil refining made the island wealthy, and with 7,000 ships entering the harbor each year, the gyrations of this famous swinging pontoon bridge are the welcome inconvenience of an expanding prosperity. Peter Stuyvesant was the first governor of Curaçao, which was the first Dutch settlement in the Western Hemisphere. The colonial powers of Europe fought bitterly over the little trading outpost, and it changed hands many, many times. But in 1816, it became Dutch to stay. And in 1954, it became an autonomous territory within the Kingdom of the Netherlands. Now, while the island is very definitely Dutch in custom, culture, and appearance. The natives can trace their heritage to all the countries of Western Europe, to Africa, Asia, and to Northern Venezuela. About 50 different nationalities are represented and they have a very diversified society. Curacaoans have an unusual language ability. They may very well be the most cosmopolitan people of the Western Hemisphere because almost everyone can converse fluently in at least four different tongues, Spanish, English, French, and Dutch. And that's not all. The local residents also speak a curious native dialect called Papiamento. Papiamento was concocted right here on the island. It's a mixture consisting of Spanish, Dutch, English, French, and a sprinkling of Portuguese. Blend them all together and you have Papiamento. International pictures. The island is 38 miles long and has a total area of 178 square miles. Tourists have their choice of miles of beaches, inlets, and bays. It's an island of sun and sea, of sand and surf, an oasis in the blue Caribbean. Curacao is not only accessible by sea, but boasts a most modern airport. By jet, Willemstead is about five hours from New York, and as they say in Papiamento, Bon Bini. The shops feature a wide range of fashionable items at a wide range of prices. Because of the exchange rate that favors the American dollar, Willemstead is practically a free port. The tourist trade, which numbers some quarter of a million persons each year, has brought everyone and everything into the act. Now the wares may be different, but the vendors and the refreshments are just like back home. Curacao has grown rich from oil and commerce, but depends on neighboring lands for its food supply. A fleet of small boats from Venezuela, only 38 miles to the south, makes a regular run to the island with the daily produce. Freshly harvested bananas, coconuts, and other tropical foods are sold right on the decks and keys of this floating market. In the inland regions, water is drawn from the ground by means of windmills and hand pumps. Now, while these methods are adequate for rural areas, an extensive water distillery installation provides the island's major water supply through the conversion of seawater. 
The economic development of Curacao is largely the story of oil. The refinery is one of the largest in the world. It employs 30% of the island's labor force, and it contributes $50 million a year to the economy of the country. Lush resort hotels catering primarily to the tourist trade add another dimension to the island, luxury. A touch of Las Vegas and Monte Carlo in the Caribbean. The casino offers what casinos offer all over the world, gambling, and the chance to match your luck against the house. Geography has favored Curacao. It has brought the ships, the planes, the industry, and the tourists. And overseeing the entire procession is Queen Emma. Like the master control monitoring all of the island, she links the flow of daily life, and she signals its interruption. The traffic stops, and the roadways clog up in confusion. This sort of thing takes place over 7,000 times a year. To put it another way, the bridge is open for an aggregate total of over seven hours every day. The idea for the swinging pontoon bridge was the brainchild of an American council. The original bridge was built in 1888, and the latest renovation was completed in 1938. For the impatient, there are two ferries in operation when Emma swings. In the early days, a graduated toll system was charged to cross the bridge. Two cents if you wore shoes. One penny if you had on sandals. And free if you wore no shoes at all. Today, the traffic has changed. No one is barefoot, and the bridge is now toll free, and so are the ferries. Everyone has his own method of dealing with this sudden interruption in his plans. No one seems to rely on just plain patience. The average wait before Emma restores Willemstead back to normalcy is 21 minutes. Too long for those who can get across without Emma's aid. And just long enough for others to take a short recess from the whole situation. Emma is, of course, the necessary compromise between land and sea. Without her, life would be more hectic than it is with her. The chaos that she creates is really a byproduct of order. There has been a rumor that someday in the future, Emma may be replaced by a stationary bridge. That would be like replacing the Eiffel Tower in Paris. For when Emma goes, Willemstead will have lost its most famous landmark. Meanwhile, the bridge is the regulator. She tells the city of Willemstead what to do and when to do it. In Curacao, everyone waits for a bridge named Emma. Mm -hmm.